It's just a two lane road to that oasis in the desert and the seats are set. 49ers versus Chiefs. Super Bowl 58 coming your way on CBS and it's a rematch of Super Bowl 54 or Super Bowl win number one for Patrick Mahomes. 31-20 the final score there as it was 21 unanswered in the fourth quarter by KC to erase a 10-point fourth quarter deficit. Revenge perhaps on the mind of those faithful who will be making the trip to the desert. Never too early to set the stage. The conversation will roll on for two weeks and here at the center of it all. Bryant McFadden, the two-time Super Bowl champion, our guy Eric Casillas, the sports line mind himself. We're going to dig into some of the numbers here, but I just want to get into the matchups that come to mind when you think about these two teams. Your initial thoughts, BMAC, when you look at 49ers, Chiefs, on CBS, Super Bowl 58, different cast of characters mm -hmm. than when we saw them in 54. What's the matchup that you look to right off the bat? Two highly respected coaches in the National Football League, Kyle Shanahan, Andy Reid. Mm -hmm. and when you talk about what we've witnessed throughout this entire slate of ball games in postseason play, the coaches that make the best adjustments put themselves in positions to win ball games. We saw that in the NFC Championship game with San Francisco making timely adjustment, adjustments coming out of halftime to be able to prevail and win the ball game. And the same can be said for the earlier matchup in Baltimore with Kansas City, especially on the defensive side, finding ways to keep things intact for them to win this ball game. I look at Andy Reid right now. He's the best head coach in the National Football League. Kyle Shanahan is not too far behind as well. This is the only thing that's kind of keeping Kyle Shanahan outside of that or those elite-like conversations where you talk about some of the best coaches that ever lace them up on the sideline in the National Football League. So, EK, that's the matchup that I'm looking at when you talk about the minds that these two guys bring to the table, Their, the creativity offensively, calling plays, dialing up strategic opportunities, mm -hmm. especially in situational moments. You know, I respect both coaches, but you better believe the coach that has his hand in his bag the most will find a way to win this ball game. Yeah, I think the coaching matchup is, is absolutely fascinating. I mean, look, everyone's going to talk about Pat Mahomes. They're going to talk about Travis Kelsey. They're going to talk about Christian McCaffrey. They're going to talk about all of those San Francisco weapons. But I think you nailed it. I think the coaching matchups, whether it's, you know, the defensive coordinator of the Chiefs and, and that long time and long standing and what they do and how are they going to attack Christian McCaffrey? What are they going to do with Brock Purdy? Are they going to make him stay in the pocket? Are they going to take away George Kittle? Are you going to, what's going to go on with Debo? I mean, the 49ers have so many guys, it's like a shell game. If you take away Kittle, they go to Debo. If they take away Debo, they go to McCaffrey. Take away McCaffrey, they go to Ayuk. What are they going to do in terms of scheme against the uh, San Francisco 49ers? Conversely, what is that 49er defense going to do for scheme against the Chiefs? Because now Isaiah Pacheco can run the football. The, the Kansas City Chiefs have a much better offensive line than when they showed up to play Tom Brady and the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. What are they going to do to Kelsey? How about Rasheed Rice? There is a, this is a chess match for two weeks that we get to unpack. And I actually think this is a more coach-centric matchup than we've ever had mm. in any of the previous Super Bowls. And it's Andy Reid who tries to further his legacy. Kyle Shanahan trying to add yeah. that only missing piece. And almost poetically, Kyle Shanahan will try and ride the kid who he used to babysit around Super Bowls <laughs> to his first Super Bowl title. There's history all over this one, but the immediate history we look to is four years ago, Super Bowl 54 EK. Do you put any sort of weight into the rematch factor here? I mean, so many different names when we're looking at the cast of characters, both who have come and gone. But the coaches are the same. Yep. And again, I don't want to beat the same drum, but the coaches, mm -hmm. the head coaches are the same. And this is a this is a sexy coach matchup. The wonder kid who's not so young anymore, who still hasn't won, who could have won in Atlanta when they were up 28 to 3, could have won against Andy Reid, didn't quite do it, and now gets an absolute gift from the Lions, which puts them back with another chance to close the deal against Andy Reid, who keeps just going higher and higher and higher on the all-time coaching list. And again, it's Steve Spagnola and that defense going up the 49er and how they scheme plays. This again I see is a coaching just nirvana and a sexy <laughs> coaching matchup and that's what I take from what happened four years ago. The coaches, the front and center coaches are still the same. For me, it's about what has, you know, Kyle Shanahan, what, 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 what he's learned. Mm. Because you look at his two Super Bowl appearances as a coach, coordinator with Atlanta, 
most recently four years ago, head coach with the San Francisco 49ers. In both cases, his teams had double-digit leads in the second half. And they found ways to squander away those opportunities. We know about what happened with Atlanta against the New England Patriots. Many people feel, felt like he just wanted to throw the football, kept his foot on the gas, and led to opportunities for Tom Brady and the Patriots to come back. And they won that ball game. If you remember, go back four years ago, he was kind of like taking the game out of what they were doing to help them get that 10-point lead or whatever it was in the second half and just became super aggressive. What, you know, what, what, what he's learned? You, because you can't get into this moment once again and have a double-digit lead in the second half and, and find a way to squander, a little, squander it away. So it's about the learning experience because you don't question that with Andy Reid. Andy Reid has an abundance of experience in the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. you know, winning and losing. So he's been on both sides of the spectrum, understanding what it takes to find a way to finish the drill you know can we see a difference in regards to the mentality from Kyle Shanahan and his troops to be able to have the opposite happen in this matchup compared to what happened in the first matchup Mac I just heard a couple coach Tomlinisms come out of you there so I want to take you back to your Super Bowl experiences I finished the drill I think was is what I was latched on to no there. question talk to me about the pressure you felt leading up to a Super Bowl and two-part question here where's the pressure live in this matchup well for us honestly my rookie year I was fresh out of college. I didn't know how big the moment was, <laughs> honestly. Mm -hmm. I felt like, oh, my rookie year, we made it to the big dance. This is supposed to happen every year. I didn't come to the realization how difficult it was, difficult it was EK, until speaking to other guys that played in the National Football League during the offseason, and, you know, they were congratulating me being a part of a Super Bowl team. I'm like, wasn't that bad? We, we, we got there. It was easy. So more pressure, would you say, the second time around? No question. Yeah. Because now I knew and the rest of the guys knew how important the moment was. Because you never know if you can ever get back to that moment. Now, when you factor in this matchup, I would say more pressure is on San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the teams that faced off in championship weekend today, EK, Baltimore, Kansas City, Detroit, San Francisco. One team was consistently always in this, op in this moment. The San Francisco 49ers, and granted, Kansas City has been there as well, but they've won. Mm -hmm. San Francisco, you gave us a stat, the last three NFC Championship games, they did what? They took L's. Lost the, first, lost the last two and won this one. Yeah, it lost the last two. Mm -hmm. Before today's matchup, the last two games in championship play, they lost. So now you finally got over that hurdle of winning to get back into the big game. Now can you do so and win it all and finish the drill? EK, I would say the consensus, all of the football heads, getting ready for the season, when you factor in everything that was returning for San Francisco, we all probably would say the most talented team in the NFL was the San Francisco 49ers. Right? Mm -hmm. So when you factor in that pressure and then what happened the last time you faced off and played in the Super Bowl not being able to win, the pressure is on San Francisco for me, in my opinion. The pressure of putting money in our pockets always belongs to Eric Casillas, and I see the red pen already working on those numbers. <laughs> it opened at three, EK. I'm holding a Chiefs catching three ticket right now. That number has moved and settled at one and a half. 49ers, one and a half point favorites here. They've been favorites in every single football game this season. Yep. It's the first time that's happened for the 49ers since 1994, the last time they won, won a all. Super Bowl. Yep. So I don't know if that I indicates anything here, but we're looking at one and a half, 47 and a half. Is there an early jump on either of these numbers? Yeah, I, I love the Chiefs at three. I, you know, again, now what I do is I make my own line before I look. And I thought this would be right around a pick em, or maybe the 49ers giving one. And I know everybody, you know, sort of bets online now. But I like to think, and in my mind, conjure up images of yesteryear when there was a bunch of guys, you know, in Hawaiian shirts holding subs, <laughs> you know, and waiting for the line to get posted. And when it gets posted, sprinting to the window all at once to bet one side before it goes back down. And so you could see everybody ran and bet the Chiefs early. All the early money came in on the Chiefs, which is why that wasn't happening. And that's where I am. Look, the one thing about Kyle Shanahan, sh let's not really, you know, say this too loud. He's not been good in big games. All right? He was bad with Atlanta when he had the big lead. He had the double-digit lead with the 49ers and gacked that up to Andy Reid. And if Dan Campbell, who I love, and I say this you know, kindly, but it is fair. <laughs> if Dan Campbell doesn't commit coaching malpractice, then right now Kyle Shannon has lost three straight NFC mm -hmm. Championship games, including two at home when he was favored. He's not been good in big games. How many times does he need to let you down in a big spot before you don't 
jump on that. Meanwhile, I got Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. They were getting drilled at halftime last year by the Eagles. Does anybody remember that? They're never out of it. They beat Buffalo at Buffalo. They beat Baltimore at Baltimore. And now they're going on a neutral field and we're going to give them points? What are we, morons? It's like when <laughs> Phil Jackson back in the day said when Utah was favored over Chicago in the NBA Finals, I want to meet the moron who's betting against Michael Jordan and giving them odds. I want to meet the moron who's betting against Patrick Mahomes and giving them odds with a coach who, let's be honest, has never done anything in a big spot against Andy Reid. I echo that. <laughs> Pat Mahomes <laughs> as an underdog. We don't really see him as an underdog a lot. But the few times he's been an underdog, 10, 1, and 1 ATS. Hard to argue with. It, exactly. Everything EK gave you guys is, is, is betting nuggets. And that was the final thing for me. That's all I needed to add. 10, 1, and 1 ATS as an underdog. Pat catching points. I think that's the sentence right there. Anytime Pat's catching points, we'll see what this line does over the next two weeks, but you have an opportunity to catch one and a half with the greatest quarterback doing it right now. Hard to argue with. No question. Brian McFadden, Eric Casilius, the talk is just starting as these two gentlemen will have you covered from Las Vegas beginning next Monday on CBS Sports HQ. Sprawling coverage across our host of networks from CBS to CBS Sports Network, CBS Sports HQ, streaming on Paramount+. Plus. There is only one team to be with. Not the Niners, not the Chiefs. It's the team on CBS. Join us in front of the Bellagio Fountains all week long as we get you set for Super Bowl 58 on CBS.